I'm Melissa, the Every Woman Driver. Today I have Dave from Every Man Driver in the passenger seat with me, and we're driving a 2015 Nissan Rogue. We're just gonna kinda drive this around. Dave's taking me to lunch today as payment for my work. <laughs> she's a hard working uh, Every Woman Driver, so she's gotta be rewarded. <laughs> I get to go to my favorite place. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I know you did an off-road review, right? Yeah, this was fully redesigned in 2014. Only a couple of minor differences for 2015, and that's this eco mode transmission and the optional heated cloth seats, which I surprisingly like. They are really comfortable, aren't they? And even with the, the I mean, I didn't think it would matter necessarily with the cloth seats to have heated, mm -hmm. you know, have them heated because typically that's like a feature with leather interior. Right. But it's really comfy, nice, nice interior. I, I like this a lot. What do you think of it? Uh, interior wise, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you because uh, in my review, I talk about the interior with the instrument cluster, how nicely it's laid out there, pretty easy. Um, but I'm not going to say vanilla in a bad way, but vanilla in a in a familiar way. Yeah, I think so too. It's it's very user friendly. Um, same same thing with the outside, which we were talking about earlier. The exterior is just okay. You know, it's not fantastic, and it's it's not you know below average. It's just okay, and I kind of feel like that about the interior. It's not super impressive, but it's very it's it's nice. It's nice enough. They call us a, a compact crossover SUV and this is one of the very few vehicles in that segment that has three rows optional. I know, I so seven people you can squeeze in this car. It seems kind of like it'd be a really tight fit, but it's it's a nice option for such a small car. Yeah, squeezing would be the, the key word there. Uh, I prefer the two rows in this size vehicle. Um, overall, the usability that you've experienced. I know that your your mom actually bought one of these. Yeah, my mom bought a 2014 Nissan Rogue, brand new. And one of the things that I commented on when I got in this car was the difference in the size of the screen here. Um, she does have a backup camera in the car, but the screen is much smaller. So is this a seven inch screen? Yeah, this has a premium package on this uh, SV trim level. And with that, you get a seven inch touch screen which is pretty easy and we have a button to the left hand side right hand side and pretty clear and, and colorful yeah. touch screen I I'm pretty sure that my mom's isn't a touch screen it just is a but it does offer the backup camera it's a mm -hmm. little bit small mm -hmm. I I prefer a larger screen for the backup camera it gives you more you know it's easier to use and this also has the uh, parking assist I think it's called or the 360 view when you're backing up which is really cool one other thing that you have an option for, for safety is these driving aids where uh, if someone is to come up from behind on either side of you or even in front of you, these lights light up in the, uh, the beam here, the A pillar versus the side mirror. I kind of like that because it's a little yeah. bit closer to you versus having to, I know it's probably just a few more inches of looking off to the left, but right there in your peripheral. Yeah, definitely. Um, my car has it in the mirror, like you said, and it's definitely you know obvious but yeah that is nice the blind spot detection over there is really cool what's your experience uh, in terms of the the engine and the power the get up and go and or the lack of i don't think it has a lot of get up and go it's kind of underwhelming i guess <laughs> but the gas mileage is really great in this car so that's the trade-off you know for that obviously all the time 2.5 liter four cylinder and the gas mileage that she's talking about is because of a cvt the mm -hmm. continuous continuously variable transmission so it just kind of spools up and and they say the numbers here are 25 city 32 on the highway for uh, estimated miles per gallon what do you think about the road noise because i think it's it's sort of noisy do you agree with me i didn't think so uh it didn't seem like it stood out to me and one reason why i may think it's that is because there's no sunroof here so you don't open this up and allow a little more vibrations or noise in it. So to me, it seems like it is a somewhat quiet cabin and it is preference. I mean, what you say, what sounds loud to you may not sound loud to me. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of a, a subjective thing, I guess. Is that, am I using the right word? I think so. Um, you know, your opinion is different than mine. I really like a quiet car, quiet cabin. And I also prefer a sunroof, but... Yeah. Um, then again, it's not something that you use all the time because we live in the Pacific Northwest and you hardly ever, or the Inland Northwest, you yeah. hardly ever open up the sunroof when it's snowing or raining. But yeah. How about usability, cup, sp cup, uh, cup holder space, uh, pl placing the, the center console, and how do you how do you see this as a, a family car or maybe as a young adult car? 
yeah, I could definitely see a family driving this car. I mean, I think the seat comfort is really, I mean, above average. Honestly. That's a selling point then. Yeah, I definitely think so for a family or road trips or whatever you're mm -hmm. doing. Cargo volume in this vehicle is 32 cubic feet of volume behind the back row of seats. Fold them down. They're not necessarily flush, but you get up to 70 cubic feet of volume. They have something here called divide and hide cargo flexibility. Mm. So just below the floorboard in the back, you can lift up and there's another space of five or six inches wow. uh, below the floorboard. So okay. divide and, and hide things in the cargo area. Yeah, that's I love that option because you know, you and I both like to go running or riding our bikes and sometimes we park somewhere where you have to stash your purse and keys and all that kind of stuff. Well, not your keys because <laughs> you'd be locked out, but yeah. all your valuables. <laughs> now this does have a 7.6 inches of ground clearance. So if you do plan on going over some large speed bumps off a curb, maybe a little bit of off-roading or you're going to be going through some potholes, you do have some room there, which is good. What did you think about this off-road? Did you think it was well? Well, I took, it, I took it pretty easy. Uh, you can see that in my car reviews channel, and I took it pretty easy and didn't take any uh, challenges of going into some mud puddles I could see the bottom of, but I went up the, the usual little valleys and gauntlets, and, and uh, it seemed to be okay. It's got that all-wheel drive that you can lock, mm -hmm. so it gives you some strength and uh, some confidence going, even if one wheel is locked or engages, other ones, all the power goes to the right, le right uh, wheels, and it works out fine. Wow in terms of price the base trim level on this one is around, right around twenty three thousand dollars and the highest level is twenty nine thousand and you then you can put extras onto it right that seems super affordable i can't even imagine a brand new car like this one for that price do you know what your mom bought it hers for yeah it was around twenty nine thousand. so we just arrived at my favorite lunch destination dave's buying today and subscribe to my channel so we can see each other more often and check out dave's channel on youtube everyman driver bye